In this problem, we want to verify this identity. So remember, we either have to start with the left-hand side and prove it equals the right-hand side or vice versa. And let's have a look at this one. There's a whole bunch of different trig functions. I've got secant of x, cosine of x, sine of x, and tangent of x. So it looks like most probably the best way to do this problem would be to turn everything into sines and cosines and see where that leads us. It's often easier if you have two terms to start with those and then combine them into the single term on this side. But what I'm going to do is I jot down a note to the side. What do I want? I want the sine of x times the tangent of x which is sine x over cosine x. So what I'm aiming to get is a sine squared x over cosine x. And then I will then prove it equals sine x times tangent x. So we start with the left hand side with our two terms secant x minus cosine x. And we're going to write everything in terms of sines and cosines. Well, remember the secant of x is 1 over the cosine of x minus cosine x. So now I have a fraction added to a non-fraction. So let's turn the second one into a fraction. And to add fractions, what do you need? You need a least common denominator. And what is the least common denominator? Well, I only have cosine x there and a 1, so my LCD is cosine x. Now, since this is an identity, I can't multiply both sides by cosine x to get rid of my denominator. But what I am allowed to do is write the second term over cosine x. So to get a cosine x in the denominator, I have to multiply that 1 by cosine x. So I'm going to have to multiply the numerator by cosine x, because what you do to the numerator, you do to the denominator. Because really, what is cosine x over cosine x is just 1 in disguise. So now I'm going to have my common denominator of cosine x is going to be under both those terms and I'm going to have 1 minus cosine x times cosine x, which is cosine squared x. And now look at where you're trying to go. Well, I've got my cosine x in the denominator. I want a sine squared x in the numerator. So at this point, you should go, oh, I know what to do now. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1 the most important trig identity, I mean the most, sorry, the most important Pythagorean identity. So if I subtract cosine squared from both sides, I get sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. So now my numerator, instead of being 1 minus cosine squared x, I can write it as sine squared x over cosine x. And some students think they're done at this point because they have what they want. But remember, for a trig identity, you have to prove the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So I just take the this and write it as this. So sine squared x is sine x over 1 times sine x. That's going to give me my sine squared x in the numerator over cosine x. So now this is equal to this, and I can then write this as sine x times sine x over cosine x is tangent x. And that is equal to my right-hand side. I proved the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, so I am done.